up to preach a Sunday morning service and he decided that he was going to do something a little bit different this morning. He said, uh, today in church I'm going to say a single word and after whatever word I say, you sing the first hymn that comes to mind. So, congregation's like, okay, we can do this. Pastor shouted out, cross! And the church started to sing, Old Rugged Cross. And uh, so then the pastor shouted out, grace! And the church started to sing, amazing grace. And then the, then the pastor shouted out, power! And the church started to sing, there's power in the blood. And then the pastor shouted out, sex! And the whole congregation looked just like you. <laughs> Bewildered, a little bit down, and then an 87-year-old lady stood up in the back of the church and started singing Precious Memories. <laughs> Thank you so much for that this morning. It is good to laugh in church, isn't it? It's, it's, you know what? We need to have a good time as God's people. We don't always need to have long faces and all be mourning all the time and woe is me. We need to be excited about the Lord Jesus Christ and the opportunities that He has given us and that He provides for us. And this morning we're going to a book that preachers rarely preach on. And it's the book of Jude. And I, I don't know why I like this book. It's just, it's just simple. It's easy. There's not a lot there, but yet there is a ton there. And we start out in Jude chapter 1, because there's only one chapter. And verse 1, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are, Lord. We thank you for being on the throne, for staying on the throne, for, for controlling everything around us and watching out for us and having our backs. Lord, we thank you for the possessions we have. We thank you for the jobs we have, Lord. We thank you for the future that you've set out before us that we, if we follow you, can live in full. Father, we thank you for every day that you give us. We know that our days are numbered, but we're still here, which means we still have work to do, Lord. Guide us through that. Help us to be the best servant for you every moment of every day, all the time. God, we need a renewing today. We need our spirit to be full. We need to be cleansed by your blood. We need to be shown as white as snow before the Father. We ask for you to do that this morning, God. Wash us. Cleanse us, Lord. Each and every one of us has failed you this week. And corporately we apologize. Father, we do love you. And we serve you. We ask that you would speak to us this morning. That your Holy Spirit would, would dwell in us and fix what's broken in us. In Jesus' name, we ask for you to unfold this passage to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ. So what's he saying? I'm Jude. Oh, wait a minute. We don't, I don't think we get that. Do you know what Jude means? I'm Judas. <gasps> Judas. And instantly we think of the one that betrayed Jesus, right? No, that's not this Judas. And maybe whoever translated the book of Jude put Jude up there instead of Judas because they wanted to make the distinction between the one that betrayed Jesus and this guy. This guy is a bond servant of Jesus Christ. I don't know that Judas Iscariot would be able to say that. A bond servant of Jesus Christ, which means he's a slave of Jesus Christ. How many of you are slaves of Jesus Christ? I'm probably a slave. I wear the chains on me all the time, and that's what the chains on my tattoo mean, that I'm a slave to Christ. 
I'm a slave to the Trinity, which is the symbol in the middle, for all eternity, which is the circle around it. Just the way I see myself. And Jude saw himself the same way. I am a slave of Jesus Christ. That is not a punishment. That is being set free. If you, have, if you really want to be free, become a slave of Jesus Christ. You will find ultimate freedom. Because you know what? Even we're blessed in this world. And, and also blessed in the next world. Because there's going to be a judgment in the next world. You know what? That judgment... It goes favorable to the slaves of Jesus Christ. Jesus is like, I love my slaves. You've been a slave to me. I love you. I am not going to throw you into the pit of fire, into the lake of fire, into hell with all those who have chosen to go there. Amen? Because hell is a choice. You choose to go there. I have ran into quite a few people lately that have... have openly told me that they're choosing to go to hell. I'm like, hey, good on you. I don't have to put up with you in heaven. <laughs> I don't want people in heaven to have bad attitudes about Jesus Christ. Right. I don't think Jesus wants, wants those people there either. Right. Actually, he probably does, but he wants to change their attitude first, right? right. Mm. That's part of that being fixed. We all need to be fixed in one way or another. We need God to come in and make those, make those adjustments. Sometimes, like, sometimes it's just fine tuning, but sometimes it's major adjustments. You know when you buy a used car? You never know what you're going to get. You might get a really good car. You might get something like Jamie got that broke down every 35 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> she gets it back from the mechanic shop and it breaks down. And then she blames the mechanic, it's not the mechanic's fault, and it's, she got a lemon. And some of us are like that. We're always breaking down. We've got major things that need repairing. But yet we don't know it all the time until something happens to show us where we're broken. And then part of our problem is we're like, oh, I'm going to try to fix this myself. How many self-mechanics do we have out there? I'm one of them. My, my vehicle breaks down. I'm, I'm fixing it myself. I'm not taking it to somebody. And that's, that's part of our problem. It's part of our problem with, with, with being broken inside. We want to try to fix that ourselves. You know, something, something happens and we notice that, that, we're, sh that we're short somewhere or something's, something's not right with us. So we're like, oh, I can fix that. No problem. And, and, and we become self-mechanics and we try, to, we try to fix whatever's broken with us instead of going to the ultimate mechanic. Instead of going to the best mechanic on the planet, the best mechanic in the universe, which is who? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. You see, when we're broken, we need stuff fixed. We need to go to the mechanic. We need to take ourselves to the mechanic. We need to get before the mechanic and say, hey, fix me. I don't even know everything that's broken, God, but please fix me. That's being a servant of Jesus Christ. That's being a slave of Jesus Christ. I don't know what's broken, God, but fix it. Please fix it. And when we do that, we come back way, way better, don't we? We came back, we come back not just new, but better than new. Can you imagine being better than new? Ooh. Better than new. What is better than new? Is it, can I, I don't even know if I've got a, a, a definition for that. Better than new. Better than new would mean like, okay, um, I'm broken. My, let's say my legs don't work, so I ask God to fix it, and he makes me this $6 million man with all bionicle legs. That's what I'm talking about, better than new. All right, I, I talk about this all the time. Since I'm diabetic and my, and my feet get a little funky sometimes, they, they don't work and, and, and I, you know, it's hard to feel them and sometimes they hurt really bad. And when I'm like, get the chainsaw. And I'll text Tiffany, get the chainsaw. We're just going to cut them off. And then, well, what are you going to do, Dad? You can't get around. Six million dollar man. God's got this. He's going to take care of it. He can fix whatever I break, right? <laughs> I'm all in. Let's do it. Oh, that better than new. So Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and brother of James. He must like his brother. Some of you wouldn't claim your sibling. 
we see a, a man that probably we could get some pretty good advice from, right? I would say. He, he's not bragging on himself. He's not on a high horse. He's not stuck on himself. He doesn't have a lot of those qualities that are just turn-offs. Just a, a regular, humble guy. And then he tells us who he's writing to. To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. To those who know Jesus. That's what this call <coughs> means. It's not a separate group of people like some would have you believe that God took a group of people from the beginning and said, this group is going to heaven, this group is going to hell. That's not what we're talking about here. That is bad theology. Good theology says there's a group of people that choose to go to heaven because they've accepted what Jesus Christ has done for them. Right? Holy God, He came to earth, He died on the cross, He rose again. That's what He did for us. This is that group called, okay, I believe that, I've confessed it with my mouth, I believe it in my heart, and I live it every day. That's that part. I live it every day. That, because, you know what, you can't just say that I believe something and, and then not do it. Well, I believe my motorcycle will work. And I believe I can ride it, but I never do. I just leave it sit there. Would you, would you really believe me if I told you, hey, I believe my, my bike's going to run, but then I never ride it? You'd be like, you don't even think that thing's going to run. That thing's been sitting there for so long, it's not even going to work. No, because you've got to put your faith to action. If you don't put your faith to action, you're proving that you don't have faith. Hmm. You think about that this week. There's one for you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> think about that this week. So this group over here, they've been called. They, they have chosen to follow Jesus Christ. That's, that's who Jude is talking about. And why? They have been sanctified by God the Father. They are beloved. They are loved by God the Father fall into that little special category that the Father has set aside for those who follow His Son, Jesus Christ, and are preserved in Jesus Christ. I love this word. Preserved. Um, so they're all alcoholics. <laughs> Go ahead. It's good. Jump the pew. Run. Hurry up. Preserved in Jesus Christ. They're not, and you know, they say that those who those who drink a lot live a lot longer because they're pickled. <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole idea of being preserved, right? Um, I, I, that is kind of the kind of the connotation here is that Jesus Christ is is saving or is a um, is protecting is uh, well, giving longevity to his people, to those that follow him. He's preserving them. He's added a little bit of vinegar to the, to the quart jar before he puts you in the pressure canner. And this whole life that we live is a pressure canner, isn't it? It's Jesus preserving us. He protects us. And then he puts us through the fire to make sure we're purified and, and clean for the, for the Father in heaven when we get there. This uh, preservation. And so we see that this group of people, they have justifiers, they're called, they're loved, they're preserved. This is, so we know all about this group that Jude is writing about. We know all about Jude. We all know all about the group that Jude is writing about. And then we see mercy, peace, and love be abundant to you. Have 
an abundance of, this is a blessing, so to speak, have an abundance of mercy, peace, and love. What's, a, what's an abundance of mercy? It means people do bad things to you all the time, and you love them anyway. Right? And you know what? I, I, was, I was someplace yesterday, and I was sharing about the cafe, and uh, telling what we do there, and... And it was, we were talking about other restaurants, and he's like, well, have you ever eaten at this place? I'm like, no, I've never eaten there, and I, because, because I'm, gonna, I, I'm the cook at the cafe, and I guess I'm a little biased. I think my food is the best on the planet, and why should I go someplace else and get subpar food when mine's the best? And he looks at me and goes, yeah, you must, you must really like it. I'm like, Wow. What did I do to deserve that? And I, you know, I was, I was this close. Sometimes you just want to let somebody have it. Sometimes you just want to say, okay, I, I need to say something here. I was this close. I was this close. But you know what? Unfortunately for me, I've been working on this sermon, and Mr. Jude got into my head and, and said, mercy. Have mercy. So you know what I did? I, I kind of, kind of. You know, blue, not, not really blew it off. I, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I've, I've tried to lose weight, but this is just the hand God dealt me. Ooh. Okay. Broke the ice. Let's let, let's let it go. And him and I talked for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes after that, building that relationship, getting to know each other a little bit. I showed mercy on the guy, and it paid off. Jesus used that for me to meet somebody that I thought was a real cool guy. And maybe someday you might come to the cafe and check it out and see that, yeah, the Holy Spirit's there. Hey, there's something different about this place. Have mercy on people. Have peace within. Peace means you're comfortable with yourself. You're not in turmoil. You're not being torn apart by what's inside. Too often we're torn apart by what's inside. Amen? We are, aren't we? Things happen, we say stuff. I have... I went to one of my best friend's mother's funeral. And I know I've said this probably 50 or 100 times from up here. And I went to the funeral, and then afterwards, a party at his house. And I hadn't seen him in quite some time. And, and uh, you know, I was standing around and, ha I, you know, having a drink, visiting with people. And uh, he walks up to me, and he goes, so how you doing? And I said, well, I'm still alive. Oh, how about stepping on it? Catch that? I'm at his mom's funeral. How you doing, mom? I'm still alive. <clears throat> That's an example of one of those things that tear you up inside. To this day, I haven't talked to him, except for on Facebook a little bit, because because I'm I'm so ashamed of what I said. It tore me. He just blew it off. Now, I I think he just blew it off. But I, I, you know, that, that I, mean, I said lots of things like that that just tore me up, and uh, and not had peace inside. When you give that stuff to God, you get that peace. Amen. Don't hold on to it. Give it to Him. That's what that's what John's saying. Be merciful. Have peace and love. Have all that multiplied in you. You should have abundance of all of that. Because those are the characteristics of somebody who loves Jesus. Because Jesus had an abundance <coughs> of mercy, an abundance of peace, and an abundance of love. So yeah, we should be hanging out with the prostitutes a little bit more. We should be hanging out with the tax collectors, so they say. We should be Hanging out with those people that you can't stand their mouth. <clears throat> you know, those are the people that we should be around because we have mercy, peace, and love, and they need it. Amen?
There's a lot here in this book of Jude, and I'm kind of excited about it. We're going to turn to the next part for next week. Uh, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you, and uh, if you're interested, read ahead and see if you can guess where I'm going to go with all that. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I, I'm just, I've got a, I've got a new, a new outlook on life, I guess, and um, I'm, I'm excited about some of the little things. So, I, you know me, I'm always looking to the big thing, but cause I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big thing kind of guy. I love big activities, I like big visions, um, big challenges, but I'm, I, I'm just, I'm getting excited about the little things in life right now. And uh, I guess that's what, that's what makes me a well-rounded individual. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for your, for your church. Lord, for the opportunity to study your word, for what it says to us, and how it changes us. Lord, we ask that, we, that we're changed forever. We ask that... that uh, if our relationships aren't right with you, that we can get them right. That you would forgive us for where we failed you. That you would give us mercy, peace, and love abundantly. Lord, watch over us this week. Help us to serve you better this week, better than last. And give us somebody to witness to. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Did you feel that empty feeling? The shame's done.
again, we can't thank you enough. We're in your debt. Lord bless us this week. Cross culture, go in peace.